in nearing the conclusion of my reviews of the 1970s dystopian science fiction movie genre, um, I have to return to Planet of the Apes and do the final two in the original series, which are Conquest of the Planet of the Apes from 1972 and Battle for the Planet of the Apes from 1973. So let's start with Conquest, um, directed by J. Lee Thompson and again written by Paul Dane. It stars uh, Roddy McDowell as Caesar, um, again, Ricardo Montalban as uh, Armando, and um, Natalie Trundy as Lisa, and um, Don Murray as Breck, and um, Harry Rhodes as McDonald. And it um, takes place, and this is a little something that's a little bothersome, it takes place about 20 years after um, Beneath the Planet, uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, I should say. In that movie, Cornelius and Zira stated that there was a plague that wiped out all the dogs and cats and that people started taking apes as pets uh, and training them to do, uh, at first, very simple tasks, but later they started to become more intelligent and uh, became capable of doing things like going in grocery shopping and cooking and um, cutting people's hair. Uh, and they stated in that movie that this took place three to five hundred years in the future from 1973. Uh, but it's only been about uh, 20, 20, 25 years. Uh, it's now 1991 in this movie. Uh, and this has already happened. The plague happened and it was a space-borne virus that uh, I believe they called the Pargador's disease, which wiped out uh, the cats and dogs. And apes are already being uh, trained. And the um, uh, United States has sort of broken down into six um, autonomous zones, which are sort of run by a very uh, uh, fascist kind of government. Uh, they're like, uh, you know, police states, basically. Uh, and yes, apes are being trained to um, work as a labor force uh, by a thing called ape management, and they're very brutal. And Armando brings... Uh, the grown-up child of Cornelius and Zira, who uh, is not any longer named, although he's chosen his own, own name, and it's um, uh, Caesar is the name he chose for himself. And um, he brings him to the to this one of these cities and tells him, you know, begs him not to speak for his own safety. Um, and while they're in the city, he witnesses uh, a gorilla being savagely beaten by one of these uh, riot police types. And he screams out, lousy human bastards. And this causes you know, consternation. And uh, Ricardo Montalban says, you know, oh, it was me. I said lousy, inhuman bastards, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I can't stand any animal being treated cruelly because, you know, he's a circus owner and he treated his animals well. And uh, the police sort of buy that, that they're still questioning that they believe that Cornelius and Zero's baby was killed that uh, Dr. Hasslein uh, shot that baby at the end of uh, Escape. But there are some people who suspect that that's not true. Um, as we learn at the end of Escape, she switched her baby with uh, Heloise, the uh, wild chimpanzee, and her child was, was raised in the circus by Armando. Um, so now suspicions are raised. Um, Caesar is starting to see the way these uh, apes are being treated and he doesn't like it, but Armando again begs him, you know, not to say anything, not to act in any way that would endanger Caesar's own life. And he's going to turn himself in. He turns himself into the police and um, is, you know, to take the blame off uh, and to take the focus of attention off of Caesar, who is sold as a uh, slave ape, as it were, at a, a silent auction. Uh, by this awful governor, uh, McDon uh, Breck, played by uh, Don Murray. And he goes and starts performing, uh, you know, menial tasks. But meanwhile, he's he's secretly training kind of an army of apes. Even though apes can't speak yet, they're starting, they've started to reach uh, intelligence levels closer to uh, human beings. They're not quite as evolved as they would be in the, the first movie but they're starting to become involved enough to understand uh, some things that uh, Caesar's trying to get into their head. The idea that you know, they don't have to take this, they can revolt. And he confides in MacDonald um, and uh, 
that he, you know, wants to to lead this revolution. McDonald is kind of uh, skeptical, says you know, he's not sure that it can succeed, that he doesn't know if the apes are really ready yet. But he's being black, he, he's sympathetic to the his cause and uh, decides he's, he's not going to hamper him. And he they, they capture uh, Caesar and they force him to, to talk but using torture. And eventually uh, McDonald helps break him out and he, he kills his torturer and escapes. And he, he's starting to smuggle weapons to him, uh, also including you know, guns and um, machetes and things that they can take. They want to take over ape management, basically, and uh, uh, end you know, this uh, slave state that the apes are in. Um, meanwhile, Armando has been arrested and they're going to put him in a uh, kind of a mind reading machine. Uh, it'll force him to tell the truth and, you know, that uh, Caesar is, is, is Cornelius and Caesar's child. And to avoid this, he, he jumps out a window and kills himself. And now that basically completely ruins uh, Caesar's faith in humanity uh you know he sees that they're all you know basically evil and decides you know they need to be destroyed and uh he uh goes ahead with the revolution with mcdonald's help they do take over ape management and a, there's a huge battle with the riot police who they mostly destroy and they set the city center on fire they drag breck out and uh you're going to execute him and mcdonald begs him to be lenient and not to do this and even his own girlfriend lisa played by natalie trundy says the word no she's the second ape to speak uh when he's about to beat mcdonald to death but they do they beat him to death with their rifles and then then finally uh he's he caesar decides that's enough they're not gonna you know kill everybody he says you know we don't have to be as cruel as human beings and you know this is the beginning of the planet of the apes um, it was pretty good. Like I said, it was written by um, Paul Dane, who wrote uh, the second, the, the sequel, um, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, and also wrote uh, Escape. Um, he would not go on to write the fifth. He, he had some health problems. But um, it's well done. It's obviously um, a rather thinly veiled um, look at the uh, civil rights movement. Um, this, you know, these actions could have been like the Watts riots you know, just done with apes. Um, it's interesting, but like I said, it, it, it's violation of the timeline that was established by Cornelius and Zira uh, is a, was a bit problematic for me, even when I first saw it in uh, 1972 and I was only 13 years old. I thought, you know, gee, they, they said it was 500 years in the future and it's only 25 years in the future. You know, it seems like a bit of a stretch of imagination that primitive apes could go from basically being, you know, a, dumb animals to intelligent creatures that were capable of, of revolt uh, in such a short span of time. But if you can lay that aside, it's still a pretty decent movie, and I, I still enjoy it to this day.